Welcome to Lexicology, the study of words. In this video, we'll consider the consonants of American English. I'll introduce you to the International Phonetic Alphabet and show you how it's much more than just a list of symbols. You'll need to know how to work with these symbols, to read and write words and phrases. This description of how the chart is put together should help you grasp the fundamentals of the English pronunciation. The individual sounds of a language are called phonemes. Phonemes include both the vowels and consonants of a language. In this video, we're going to concentrate on the consonants of American English. Linguists describe consonant phonemes using three features of their articulation. Place, where in the vocal tract a phoneme is produced. Manner, the way in which it's produced. And voicing, whether or not the vocal folds are vibrating. All vowels are voiced, but consonants can be voiced or voiceless. Let's begin our chart with the grid outline. We can label the columns and rows according to the three features of consonant production. Place, manner, and voicing. The place of articulation for consonants is the spot at which we constrict the vocal tract in some way. From left to right in this chart, we go from the lips back to the vocal folds where the vibrations of voicing are produced. Our first column indicates the lips as the place where these consonants are produced and is labeled bilabial. Labiodentals are next. This is where the lips and teeth meet to form sounds. Next is interdental. This involves placing the tongue on the upper teeth. Next is alveolar. The alveolar ridge is what you can feel with your tongue just behind your teeth but before the palate. Next is the palatal area. Then the velar area, which is the back portion of the roof of your mouth. Finally, the glottal area is where voicing occurs. This is right at the vocal folds. The rows indicate the manner of articulation, or the way that you produce the sounds. Stops, fricatives, affricates, nasals, the liquids, lateral and retroflex, and the glides. I'll give samples of all of these shortly when we start looking at the International Phonetic Alphabet, or IPA, symbols. Finally, voicing is indicated by the shading of each column. Many speech sounds have both voiced and voiceless versions. The shaded portion to the right indicates a voiced consonant, while the non-shaded area to the left indicates voiceless consonants. Now that we've constructed our table, let's go ahead and look at the IPA symbols for the consonant phonemes in American English. We'll start with the stops. All of these phonemes are produced with a full closure of the airstream. Reading across the row, we have p, b, t, d, k, g, and glottal stop. Note that all of these sounds, except for glottal stop, use symbols that correspond to our English spelling and should be quite easy to remember. You may have noticed that the p and b sounds have the same place of articulation and the same manner. The only difference between the two is the voicing. This is the same for any matched pairs of phonemes that you see in a column in this chart. The glottal stop, indicated by this sort of question mark looking symbol, is the sound we make in the middle of the word kitten. Kitten. Although it's not considered a phoneme in English, it's an interesting sound, so I've included it here. The next row is the fricatives. In this case, you see some new symbols that don't correspond to our English alphabet. For now, I want you to understand that a fricative is produced with only a partial closing of the vocal tract. The airstream doesn't stop completely, as in the stops. Instead, the sound is produced by the turbulent airflow. The next row contains the two English affricates. These sounds can be thought of as a combination of a stop 
and a fricative. I'll demonstrate all the sounds for you shortly. The next row is the nasals. All of these sounds rely on air that will come through your nose and not your mouth. The next two rows are the liquids, the lateral and retroflex. And the last row comprises the glides W and Y. Students sometimes look at this chart and are overwhelmed. Don't be. It's really pretty straightforward. To review, there are three features of consonants that are indicated on the chart. Place of articulation across the top, manner of articulation along the side, and voicing indicated by the color of the box. The symbols themselves are mostly symbols from the English alphabet. There are a few new ones you will have to remember, but only a few. The interdental fricatives have unique symbols, but you probably already know the symbol theta from geometry class. Theta indicates the sound that starts the word thigh. This other symbol that looks like a backward six with a line through it is the voiced version of theta and is the sound at the beginning of the word thy. Thy, thy. The palatal fricatives also have unique symbols. The elongated S is the symbol for the consonant sound sh in the middle of the word measure, while the lowercase z is the voiced version zh, as in the word measure. Measure, measure. The palatal affricates may be thought of as combinations of a stop and a fricative. The voiceless version is the sound that begins the word cheap. The corresponding voiced version is the sound that starts the word jeep. Cheap, jeep. Cheap, jeep. The symbol engma is used to indicate the voiced velar nasal. This is the nasal consonant sound that we make at the end of a word like king. It kind of looks like a combination of an N and a G. Ng. The retroflex liquid symbol looks like an upside down R and is produced like an R. R as in rare. The voiced palatal glide, the sound in the beginning of the word yam, looks like an English J. This will be easy to remember if you speak German. You'll see that letter in the beginning of the word Jägermeister. The rest of the symbols are pronounced just as they would be in traditional English spelling. Remember that there is also a link in the unit folder to an IPA website that demonstrates the sounds if you need a review. For this course, I expect you to be able to identify IPA symbols and how to pronounce them. You should be able to use this chart to tell me the three features of any consonant I might ask for. For example, if I ask you for the three features of the first sound in the word man, you should look at the chart and tell me that it's a voiced bilabial nasal. And vice versa. If I ask for a voiceless bilabial stop, you should be able to tell me the IPA symbol is P. So there isn't a whole lot to memorize, just a few symbols. What's more important is that you're able to use this chart as a tool to answer questions about speech sounds.